So I was reading an interesting study in the Scientific American about why men pay for sex. It also reminded me of a couple of conversations that I've had recently and in the past couple of years with women who are sex workers or were former sex workers, either prostitutes or working at a strip club. So what was really surprising to me and what this article talks about is that a large number of men who visit prostitutes actually ask for intimacy and connection and want to get to know the sex worker more often than just going for the sexual pleasure. So there's sort of a breakdown. There's, there's a number of men who seem to go to sex workers or strip clubs simply for the sexual pleasure, the no strings attached, uh, sort of commodity of sex without having to deal with any trauma and things like that. But a large portion of these men, according to this study and according to these women who I've spoken to, actually go and ask for very intimate things and have an interest in getting to know the sex workers. They ask them questions, trying to get to know more about them, sort of really try to forge an emotional connection. And the sex workers claim that this is actually what's more taxing and emotionally exhausting than simply having sex with their clients. This study also says that two-thirds of devotees, or johns as they call them, use the services of one particular prostitute over 50 times. And one in four had sex with the same prostitute more than a hundred times. This is very, very fascinating, and it goes along with a lot of what I discover about men in the NoFap community and men who use pro uh, pornography to really bypass or escape the sense of a lack of emotional intimacy. Socially, people want to paint men as these purely physical animals, but when you really talk to people and you see what their motivations are, most men that I speak with, they're definitely usually more interested in a lot more than just a sexual connection. And I think that this is human nature. Our sexuality has always been meant to be in a context of love. And when we do things like just hooking up and disregarding how we feel about the other person or how that other person feels and make it purely mechanical, we end up hurting other people as well as ourselves. I know most people I've spoken to, myself included, don't necessarily feel good about these empty physical relationships. Even these men that visit these sex workers support in these studies that they feel that they have a sexual pathology and they know that something's off and something's wrong. But there's also this sense of there being a pride in that traditional male ownership of the feminine and feeling powerful that you can simply pay for sex as a commodity and that really a sense of having power over women, power over the feminine. The problem is that anytime things are coming from power and pride and things like that, it's related to the ego and it's all very short-lived. So while these men may drive these short-term pleasures and highs, they need a constant supply of more and more, just like pornography. It's a short-term, false, fleeting pleasure. Not like when you actually have real intimacy and real connection. Doesn't matter what anyone says, men and women were wired for that intimacy and that connection because that's how we learn to bond, that's how the human species is driven for that desire to connect and to have the right partner, have children. That's what that's the way we're biologically wired. So when you stray from your natural essence, you're gonna run into problems, you're gonna run into this self-destructive feeling. I think it's very, very interesting to have conversations with sex workers. I respect everybody. I don't judge anyone based on what they do for their work. Contrary to what a lot of people think, most sex workers do not enjoy being sex workers. However, they stomach it, they drink or do drugs to kind of numb their feelings from the job and it's really hard to leave something like that when you get paid so well and in this society it's a lot harder for people to make that kind of living off the bat without a lot of education and experience and connections. So it becomes a difficult sort of cycle once women get into this sort of work and have to keep doing it to keep up 
their lifestyle, pay off their school loans and stuff like that. I think it's very important for us socially to have more humanity and compassion for people and understand when you hurt other people, you're really hurting yourself. And when you sexualize a being and remove intimacy and remove love, you're also removing that from yourself. And so you become more and more disconnected. Number one reason men become addicted to deviant forms of sexuality, visiting prostitutes, going to strip clubs, watching pornography is because of a distrust of the feminine and not feeling safe or not feeling worthy of real love and connection with a woman, feeling like um, it's too much work or women are not really going to see them properly or see them well. So I think a lot of work needs to be done with the integration of the masculine and feminine and men and women coming together and having more respect for each other. Men who visit sex workers claim that they just feel more comfortable and safe um, when they're in relationships and they visit a sex worker. They claim that they just feel more comfortable and safe being able to act certain things out or getting you know, those missing components that they don't get from their partner. So in this case, I feel like it's so important to be honest about your expectations with your partner and to be transparent about whether you're able to be monogamous, you're meant to be polyamorous, or what exactly your heart and your spirit wants. Because when you engage in deception and hiding things, you end up building this subconscious guilt and shame. And you might not feel it, but it'll manifest as things like self-sabotage, doing stupid things that ruin your business, things like that. I've seen it happen quite a lot. Everything's connected, everything's symbiotic, so when you screw someone else over, you're really just screwing yourself over. I feel optimistic because I see a lot of men recognizing their need to work on themselves and to be more open to intimacy and to not engage in these deviant sexual behaviors. And a lot of that is done when men are able to look at themselves, face their shadows, do the inner work. It becomes very easy. I think a lot of people focus on the morality and the shaming of finances mixed with sexuality. But if we're honest, this plays out everywhere, especially in marriages. A lot of marriages are financially based. You can say a lot of wives are technically prostitutes. It's really about what a person's willing to trade and give another person and what they're getting in return. And if finances are involved, that's not the issue. It's an issue if that's the only thing involved and other things are missing, it's not gonna work out. And if you're using the money as a tool of manipulation or as a tool of avoiding the self, that's when you run into trouble. It could potentially be empowering for women to be paid for their sexuality, but definitely not the way it is right now. That's why most of these women are actually run by men in these businesses. They're run by pimps, they're run by male-owned strip clubs, and they're generally not able to discriminate what partners they want, they want to have. If a woman was able to choose her partners and to choose how it's monetized maybe it would be more empowering for the feminine. I also think it's super important that women not limit themselves and to see that they are worth a lot more than just their beauty and their sexuality and that they could be in high level positions just like the masculine without having to sell their sexuality. The more that we respect women and the feminine and give women opportunities for equal economic expansion, the more that everything works out and there's more trust and communion with the masculine energy. Everything's symbiotic, everything's connected, it's one living organism. Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any interesting stories about sex workers and about Johns and intimacy and if you agree or disagree in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check out the online courses, Masculine Mastery, and other courses for doing the inner work and being able to overcome these addictions and be the best version of yourself.